Welcome to today's Research Business Daily Report and our second annual roundtable discussion about the upcoming Super Bowl advertising and even the advisability of investing multi-millions of dollars in a single spot during what could be a very dangerous four-hour window. RBDR is sponsored today and this week by Socratic Technologies, whose proprietary tools and methodologies tackle marketing complexities so that you can make more confident business decisions. Well, we welcome our audience and particularly our distinguished panel who are going to be working with us today. David Paul, founder and CEO of Dial Smith, is a holdover from our Super Bowl panel of a year ago, and he also has tested many of this year's Super Bowl ads during the past week. Tim Calkins, clinical professor of marketing at the Kellogg School of Management, is also the co-author of a blog on Forbes.com this very week about whether Super Bowl advertising works, and if so, how does it work? And finally, last but not least, Robert Pasikoff, founder and president of Brand Keys, also a thought leader, and someone who has tested some of this year's brands for their ability to engage consumers. So, let's get right to it, gentlemen. Um, I'd be real curious to start. What single ad that you've heard about during the past week is the one that you are most interested in seeing for yourself and, and looking at what kind of uh, reaction it receives? Um, why don't we start with you, David? Oh, hi, Bob. Uh, thanks for having me, and uh, great to be with the rest of you guys. Um, for me, uh, I'm always interested in seeing what Doritos comes up with. Uh, their Crash the Super Bowl campaign to me is a, is a brilliant case study in, um, in focusing on the Super Bowl ad cycle every year where they put out a contest where anyone can submit an ad and have it voted on online. And then um, while you've seen uh, the 10 or so that are the finalists, you don't know until the game which one or two actually make it to air. So. I think it's a really smart strategy, and while the, the ads that air are generally pretty funny and, and very well produced, uh, I respect the whole strategy that's, that's around it beyond uh, simply a 30-second commercial. Tim, how about you? I'll be really interested to see how the NFL's commercial goes over this year. So the NFL is going to run uh, a spot uh, about uh, domestic violence, and the ad they're going to run, which they've released ahead of time, is very dark, uh, very scary. Uh, it really sends chills up your spine. And the thing that I'll be interested to see is how does that go over on the Super Bowl, which is such a lighthearted event. And the, the question I wonder is how will that uh, affect and shape what people talk about after the game? If I were one of the sponsors, one of the other advertisers on the game, I'd be a little nervous that perhaps after the Super Bowl this year, people will be talking about that spot instead of talking about mine. Robert? I'm actually curious about the Dove Men Plus Care commercial. Um, I mean, they've been phenomenally successful and engaging when it comes to women and moms. And this year they've been talking about turning around and talking about dads. So I'd, I'd like to see what they're going to do about that as well. Uh, I, I'm curious about that. Okay, next subject, Super Bowl ads and whether they are living um, up to, in, in importance to what they have been in recent years. Robert, um, over the course of time, has being a Super Bowl advertiser maintained its importance to major brands and even to first-time advertisers as it may have been three years, five years, even ten years ago? Well, I think that it's created a new platform uh, for brands uh, to be able to uh, leverage their way into virtually all of the communication channels. Um, I, you know, it, the world has certainly changed, and I think that if you go back 20 years, you know, it was, it was a great opportunity if you had the right commercial and the right strategy. Uh, now I think it's just become something that the, the combined impact of the Super Bowl and all other outreach is unquestionable. David, what about from your perspective? Um, yeah, I, I think again, I think um, it, I think it's definitely still very relevant. Um, if you view it as a 30-second commercial, then then probably less so. 
Um, but uh, if, if it's a holistic effort around what to me a Super Bowl ad is, is more than just a 30 second commercial like it was 20 years ago. Um, and, and if a plan is, is placed around that and there's a strategy around that, whether that's an annual plan anchored by this cycle or whether it's really just the Super Bowl cycle for a number of weeks or, or a month or so, I think if a strategy goes into it, then you know the, the, the relevance is certainly still there. Tim, is it as important as it has been? Oh, I think it's more important. Uh, what's happened across all media platforms is that we've seen a great erosion and a, a great level of fragmentation. So it's harder and harder to reach people, especially to reach big numbers of people. If you want to reach a lot of people in the U.S. right now, uh, really your only opportunity to do that is, is the Super Bowl. So it's becoming so unique that I think for advertisers, people are looking at it to say that is so critical. And, and then it also is a platform uh, where you can begin to engage everybody on, on social media. You know, the challenge right now with social media is people love it, but if you're going to go on social media, you need something for people to talk about. If you're on the Super Bowl, that gives you a topic. That's the currency that you can use to get a lot of discussions going about your brand. Okay. Um, are Super Bowl ads, uh, in, in terms of quality and impact and such, watered down more so as, as we go over year by year? As we Next year we'll be in Super Bowl 50. The advertising, I guess, has been important for maybe the last 10 or 15 years. But I guess some people feel that the ads are becoming less and less impactful. Uh, is that an accurate read from your perspective? Tim, why don't you go first? Uh, I, I think the ads always uh, range. So every year there's some ads that, that do a better job and some ads that, that miss. Uh, I, I think two things are happening. Uh, one is that you know a lot of people are being very safe when they go in the Super Bowl now because they know that if it goes south it can really get you into trouble. Uh, so I think there is that element. The, the other thing that still happens though is people go in the Super Bowl and run spots that just completely miss. And, and I think what happens is people say, my gosh, you know, we've got to break through the clutter and so we've got to do something that's going to be really striking and really big. And then they go out there and they run a spot and they just miss completely. But it, and sounds, I think like that will, but it sounds like they don't even test them if you're going to have that big of a mess. You know, I, I think a surprising number of people go out there and they run spots without testing, which to me doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, if I was going to run a run an ad and show it to a hundred million people, I certainly would spend some time and money to to test it. But every year we see people they don't, and they run ads that just fall flat. It's astonishing, but we see it. David, um, from your perspective, are Super Bowl ads kind of watered down, or am I looking at it incorrectly? Uh, I don't know that they're watered down. There's certainly a formula. Those who are doing it right and if they're going for the likability of the ad, um, they're, they're realizing that the formula that works, at least in our research and our ratings, is that um, it either needs to tug at, tug at the heartstrings or it needs to be funny, but it needs to be really funny. So Budweiser is successful in that regard with um, the horses and the puppies. Now you could argue that by by repeating that again this year, is that playing it safe? It's absolutely playing it safe. But um, but if it connects and people like it uh, and it fits the brand image that they're trying to put out there, um, then it's successful. Uh, you know, f humor is another thing. Humor is very very easy to miss. Um, you know, last year. Um, there was an ad by CarMax that ran that with the attempt was to be funny where someone bought a car and they and it was called slow clap and as they drove around showing off their car they got a slow clap from everyone it was the absolute bottom rated um, you know ad uh, in our ratings whereas the fun another funny ad Radio Shack the 80s called was our top was one of our top rated ads it was number three certainly the top rated funny ad because it connected and it was funny. So I think they're, they're playing it a bit safe by fitting to the formula, but with so much on the line to Tim's point, you've got to make sure the commercial, the 30 seconds, 60 seconds works, and then you can get a little bit more aggressive with a strategy around it. Okay, and Robert, I know emotional engagement of advertising is very, very central to the way you like to uh, rate an ad. So on that basis, are the ads as impactful today as they have been in the past? Uh, actually, I don't think they are as impactful. I mean, it seems as though brands have adapted to 
you know, a new media scape and a hot wire to their mobile devices consumers where they're looking to be able to create more buzz than they are by, if you will. And I, I, I think that I think that we've been tracking this now. I mean, specifically these the, the Super Bowl commercials. This is our 13th year looking at it. And the numbers are moving down in terms of where we see real strategies, real positionings, however entertaining, you know, whatever the creative shell is around it, that are having real positive effects for the brand in the marketplace. So, you know, you can you can extend the, you can extend it, you can use all of the platforms that are available, but from a one-on-one -on -one comparison, I think that a lot of the uh, a lot of the ads uh, have become less impactful, more entertaining, but not market effective. All right. So let's look at one last issue, and that is second screening, social media, and, and the like. It's very, very unlikely that we're going to see uh, a problem like occurred at the Superdome. Um, where basically the game came to a complete halt, and Oreo jumped in and did a just incredible job of taking advantage of that situation. But during the course of the game on Sunday, there may be a miraculous catch, a fantastic defensive play, um, a, uh, a goal line stand or something. So are companies out there getting ready to take advantage of you know, phrases such as those I just expressed, because I wanted to be an announcer when I was growing up, um, to to really kind of jump in, in in second screen, even if they're not an advertiser on the game, but to try to take advantage of it, and can they do so? Um, Robert, why don't you go quickly first? I, th I think that they have to be prepared to do that. I think, and I think many of them, uh, you know, many of them have, uh, I won't even call it a contingency plan, I think they realize that there are lots of people looking in lots of ways and that outreach is still going to be important to them uh, in that way. David? Uh, yeah, I think I think brands will certainly have war rooms waiting for those moments to happen. You know, what Oreo capitalized on was lightning in a bottle, um, and everyone would certainly love to to replicate that. But I saw the first one yesterday um, in my tw uh, in my Twitter stream by a, a brand called Hostgator that hosts um, uh, website domains. And uh, when the dust uh, when the GoDaddy dust up uh, happened yesterday with their ad, I started to see ads in my Twitter stream from Hostgator saying, "If you feel the sudden urge to move your domains, uh, use the code Puppy Love, and we'll take good care of you." And that was out really within minutes for I think of when we heard that they were you know likely pulling their spot GoDaddy was so I think everyone's primed and ready but they just have to be careful um, you know the, the Seahawks had a, a you know a social mishap um, after their win with uh, you know the Martin Luther King Day comparison um, so you have to be really really careful about things like that and and I know big brands are they're watching it but they've got to be super careful yeah and Tim wrap it up well, I, I think everybody is going to be uh, engaged uh, on the Super Bowl, and they're going to be ready to go with tweets and comments and all of this. And, you know, the interesting thing, though, is the, during the Super Bowl, the, everything is so cluttered. There's so much going on. It, it's a tough marketing moment. The, the real opportunity for the Super Bowl, and, and you see more and more of these brands taking advantage of it, is, is the week leading up to it and the two weeks leading up to it. That's the moment. That's when people have time. They have the energy to look about, look at, and think about these brands. That's why we see so much activity before the game. By the time it actually starts going, it's a crazy couple hours, and uh, it, it's tough to break through at that time. Okay, gentlemen, I really want to thank you very much for your time and your input, and I hope you and everybody else enjoys the game on Sunday. Okay, thank you. That's your Research Business Daily Report. We've been sponsored by Socratic Technologies, whose proprietary tools and methodologies tackle marketing complexities so that you can make more confident business decisions. I recommend you check out their website. The homepage is SoTech.com. Have a great research day and rest of your research week. Get ready for the big game on Sunday, and hopefully your Super Bowl party is a big success. And we we'll look forward to seeing everyone back here with us on Monday.